Whoa! It's all going good. Come on into episode 10. We're having a great time down here. Why don't you have a look at the car, see what we've been, what we've been doing. We've been welding and doing all sorts of stuff. Things are going really great. Episode 10. Come on into the show. Oh, yeah! Come on. Join us. Okay, ground back, flattened down, clamped up and testing. So here we go, there's our panel blended in. And you'll see, can you see just there? And just there, very difficult to get it completely. It is flush, but you do get little imperfections that if you try and really get into them, then now you start thinning out the grill, you just don't want to do that. The wheel's giving me the clues and that it's taking both sides and leaving a cavity there. So thin that just the very good quality filler goes across just them little bits and then skim that back and you're done. So I don't consider that to be any kind of a botch at all. I think that's a good repair. And it gets us a scuttle panel that's as good as new old stock without having to try and engineer something for this. You can do and we will look into getting that done we're going to have to do for the rest of the club members panels but for me to keep me going and a good test of my welding skills just took the welder with a wire speed down on position two and the power on position one using the argo shield mix from boc and then clamp the uh, scotland position you'll see that it lands in these areas ready for its braze and then we can get a spot welder on a lot of this plug welding or even spot welding there we'll see it's under tension solid and it's ready to go and it follows the profile and remember we've just been doing the screen measurements so because we're nipped up there we'll just double check that if we have to we'll just take a little bit of that edge off so that it matches the profile of the dat of the bulkhead because we know the bulkhead fitted with the screen so if this follows the profile of the bulkhead's nip edge for the window rubber seal we know that we're okay so again round this side we're nearly there if you look very closely just overlapping if you look at any Cortina you'll always see little bits of overlap where the panels don't always follow each other there so that's normal Round this corner we have to watch out with this take a little piece off so that brings that shape in for the windscreen clamp up and then double check our measurements we know that uh, we've got to have the distances there uh, 53.5 I think it was or 54 and a half I think it's 54 and a half written it down so we're okay and there we have it so that's a good little bit of a move a couple of hours it took to do to graft that in and it'll take another hour just to put in I might use my aluminium filler on this and do it myself with my flat wheel uh, I've got a, a DA sander so I might do that for satisfaction reasons then I'll put this into the Ford Primer Brown paint the inside of this as well and then take back any areas where it's going to be welded so there's no paint put weld through primer on those areas 
and get everything ready. So again, preparation, I've said it before. Don Logan says it and I say it. Preparation, preparation, preparation. Okay, good stuff. Didn't get the lower bulkhead in today because uh, this scuttle surprise arrival, uh, a welcome surprise arrival, gave me a job that I wanted to get out of the way because it's one of them jobs where you think, is that panel available? Is it going to work? Can we do something? What have we got to do with it when it arrives? So the answer's it's been answered. I'll give them 10 out of 10 for the fitment. Nine and a half, ten 10 out of 10. I mean, I'd push to try and really... Um, criticise anything on that panel at all um, and I can see why they can't punch that out for the price it's difficult, we need to get the punch made unfortunately the punch is going to be different sizes it needs to be a punch so that you get the, the lip and not just simply routed out because you've got, to, you've got to curl down otherwise you're going to have sharp edges on here so tricky um, interesting one or everyone has to just do what I've done and, and graft in because this bit hardly ever rots so you're always going to have those panels so I'd start stockpiling these pieces if I were you if this is a job you're going to do I'd be getting hold of yourself with them grills because we've shown it can be done with some patience and very careful cutting it's all in the in the cutting and then getting your your mix spaced out so you don't get any warpage i did notice after fitted this that it did put an actual twist in it even though we've kept the structure either side here it did put a twist in it because it didn't fit as good as when when i first got it without cutting that in this kicked up and I had to clamp this down but it, that made it really tense actually put like some torsion in it I'm not saying that that's a, any benefit, but if that's what happened, it did actually warp. So bear that in mind, that can happen. It must just be the way the two pieces of metal have gone in. Um, not 100% sure, but it doesn't affect it really, as long as you make sure that you just clamp everything down. It's, everything follows the other panels that has to connect to the lower panel. The, um, the wiper motor brackets will brace that out. Uh, the inner panel that's on the roof there, that one that we did, the bulkhead upper, that will, will help uh, get the shape as well. So we've done quite well and we're, we're storming ahead. I will get on and get this lower bulkhead in, but this job I just wanted, to, I would have been curious over the weekend if I didn't do it, and that's why. Okay, I'll get some still shots, so we're going to carry on. We're ready to start fitting that lower bulkhead, all the mating areas are, are faced faced up so we just need to first get the weld through primer on there and a little bit of primer on the inside of them chassis legs just because we can but they'll be getting plenty of treatment later on as well FE123 on the insides of them first that'll just neutralize any rust and then prime it and then we're ready to put that bulkhead in position we're going to have a little bit of dodgy floor sticking under it but we'll, we'll pull that out and the new floor will slot underneath it so that's where we're up to here now we're looking good and getting ready you see that new edge ready the other edge okay nothing to stop that going in it's all a question of clamping it up and getting our plug welds in so quite a bit of welding to go. I'm going to mix up some weld through primer now and also pour out some FE123. So a shake on the, the bottle. This is for the inside leg, that left hand leg. It's been welded up now and the reinforcing plate went in it just because it was having some signs of corrosion. Nothing major, nothing had penetrated. We're just on one of the skins. We'll apply this to it and uh, to those edges over there for the bulkhead. Now the bulkhead won't get affected by the one, two, three with the weld crackle because we're not putting it to the bulkhead and we're welding straight through the, the plug weld holes, the drilled out spot weld holes. If the welder was trying to weld to rust buster, you'd get crackling. Uh, so you want clean metal. So I'm only going to apply to areas where the plug weld won't be hitting. All right, something to bear in mind so you don't get crackly welds going on. Okay, a bit of paintbrush application and also to mix up over on our shelf. I'll just take you over before we do it. May as well keep you in the loop. These two components, 
make up our weld through primer. We don't want to put too much on, but enough. So we mix that as well. Some brushes at the ready, and off we go. One, two, three, four. I think that's all the faces. Just the edges of the lower pan then. Bulkhead. There you, there you go. There you go. Lovely. It slightly thickens up as well as it reacts with it because it's a two part primer. So you get a reaction and it just thickens. I've got the windows open, it's a little bit of fumes. So make sure you've got some ventilation. We've got some braze lines down this edge where it's been repaired, so we have to be careful and wary of those when we do the plugs. Some may need an actual braze plug as opposed to a, a MIG plug because the MIG will bounce off that braze. But no problem, no problem. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, just while it's on my mind, thanks for all the recent comments. And thanks for all the returning subscribers. Good to see some familiar faces out there now. I've tried to reply to you all. I hope I have done. With all your questions and your positive support and feedback. So I'm thinking of you at this time as I'm doing this job. Thinking of you sat watching at home. Or in your dinner break. On your mobile phones your computers, you commuters with your computers, hope you're enjoying, we're doing pretty good, if you have a favourite episode, why not share it on some links, get us, get us some more traffic to the site, once you get a taste for the channel doing good, you just want to keep it going. And um, we're nearly up to 10k. In fact, the good thing is, by the time I post this, most likely we'll have 10k subscribers, which is a great achievement. Okay, flip this upside down and we'll carry on.
Okay, so now that we're all lined up, the welding begins. A couple of different tools to hand. The puddle welding clamp, so you get like a, a horseshoe shape there, which means you can get your, your welder in the middle of it. It grips from behind. Good for situations like this, where we want to get a nice tight clamp up and then a plug weld in. So we'll do that one. We're just going to work from the top and slowly work down, pushing the panel forward against the leg. It's going to give a bit of resistance, especially because it's been bashed out of shape a little bit, especially around the leg area where there's a lot of welds. So we sort of weld, puddle weld at the top and start working it down into the chassis leg that follows the console. We're looking all right so far. So some welds in there. The weld through primer's working good. Not much burn back and it's managing to just take straight away without having to clean it up. So we can go straight on to that one. So we'll get that on now, then we'll just do a few more and slowly work down. You can see I've cut myself. Well that was on a tool I've never used before and I won't be using that particular one again. Maybe because it's cheap. Look at this. This caught the edge, broke round and then that plastic sliced my finger. I've never really bothered using these things, you've just got to be careful with them, they've got their applications but um, won't be investigating that any further just yet. Okay, so that's a plug weld, or a puddle weld, you've just got to go round, start from the middle, and you can do uh, 12 to 6 if you want, 3 to 9, round, you get there, and this uh, weld through primer, I do like it, it's not giving me any problems, so I'm happy about that, so let's carry on now, working our way down this bulkhead lower, Okay, just this top apron now to plug well. We're doing good, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls, doing good.
the base metal. Okay, plugged up there and plugged up here and down there. Oops, there's a strap in the way. Hold on, guys. Down there. Hold on there. Across here. All we've got to do now is down these two arch shapes, the wheel wells, along here to finish off, and we're done. There's some strength coming in this now. We're going good. We've got the strength back. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> yeah! Doing good. I'm happy. Get some strength back in the car. Let's do this. Down this run, then we go. Plug welding, we go. Let's. Just look how good these grips are for these particular for this for this particular application anyway. Just lock on, then you're in, and wow! So this is the home run, and um, I've slowly improved on my puddle welding whilst doing this car. What I found work, really works nice is put the get your settings right first. I'm on uh, power. Wire speed is just up between two and three and powers on two, no one on the super me. And then what I do, I just start in the middle of the of the world and go round in a spiral, just keep going round and round, and you can actually see the molten metal going like in a swirl. It's like uh, a walnut whip. You just going round or on, on the Blues Brothers uh, an orange whip, I never knew what an, an orange whip was on the Blues Brothers. I'll have an orange whip, two orange whips. Do you want an orange whip? Three orange whips. What the hell's an orange whip? Anyway, end of an ice cream, round we go, and it just ends up nice. So I'm going to be doing that, and we'll see what these look like. So no, none in at the moment, well, one holding one there. So let's see what they look like. I'll just cut straight to when it's done. So there we go, a mixed bag mainly all good, all good penetrating welds just uh, I like to work on the consistency now and again in there, what this one spat out a load of gunk and uh, made like a, look like something off uh, Stephen King's The Thing like some head came out of it, it was gross others puddled around nicely all penetrated through, this one there was the hole was slightly oversized so I had to try and just backfill it but on the hole, for the hole we're leaving the bottom ones off because we've got an inner sill getting pushed up and we've got a repair on that bottom piece so we just leave that area just enough to just tuck something behind it if we had to namely the sill in the inner sill just got to tuck up there so we leave that off now we can raise ourselves up and go over the car and uh, it's dressing welds time the bit no one likes doing horrible laborious job Ugh, don't enjoy dressing welds. We tend to just zone out, so we have to just go and zone out for a bit. How many spot welds are there, plug welds are there, puddle welds are there? I don't know. There's enough. Too many. So it's a weapon of choice. Go and pick our weapon of choice to take the heads off. And let's do that grinding down. I'm going to spare you the, the drudgery of it, the monotony of it drudgery of it and just do it and then you can just time warp with me and we'll just see where we ended up so a lot of welds to do let's get the heads knocked off these okay so here we have the bulkhead prepping up ready to receive its weld through primer on all the mating edges then we'll start to make preparations to fit this into the car and actually get the welds on the go that's an exciting time. 
quite a bit of checking to do to make sure if it fits right how we want that includes the windscreen aperture dimensions which we've discussed earlier we take a measurement when the bulkhead's in compare it to another vehicle another mark three and make sure that we get that lip correct we've already trial fitted the glass we've got some rough ideas and some figures so we'll make sure we we stick to that vigorously so just clean not need to clean up the bottom lip of this all the mating edges then the same as we did with the lower bulkhead and that is that we use that well through primer which is turning out to be great stuff so let me clean these surfaces up and then get ready with the um let's say the primer and then we can start making preparations to actually fit this we've got the dash to do as well i'm going to take you across through the mess we need to tidy up this is just a day's worth of mess a late finish last night leaves me too tired too tired to clean this edge needs re getting ready so we're going to do that now i bring this out over to the prep area on the floor as i mentioned as well again i like working low down on the floor i've got something to tell you as well and i've just bought plasters i've not really fitted them look at this okay this is a what you call a uh oh hell i forgot the name of it now some kind of a scuffing pad there's a name for it something wheel I only never used them before first time it's for taking off paint it does do the, exactly that however i didn't realize that they can break apart like this and do that so that's a little bit of uh, what we call pad rash on my finger i've put savon on it but i'm gonna have to that's the second injury the other injury again mentioned was that piece of junk white plastic wheel that's shattered now both tools are both tools i've never used before and both have injured me so it just goes to show if you're not familiar and again not having the gloves didn't help so there's me preaching on about gloves which I do have on most of the time and then the very time I don't is when it happens so I look the biggest idiot going there for doing that so ouch scuffed not good not I'm not happy about that at all I think that's I've let myself down there all right anyway enough of that let's get prepping dashboard okay I've done the dash edge repairs new metal gone in to make that to finish that lip off on the dash same at the other end so let's just let some metal in there just so that dash top's good to go and now we've mixed our weld through primer 60 40 mix in we go and we've prepped up all our receiving faces including these landing panel back sides because that'll burn otherwise so take the this body primer off and just put even though we're not welding that side it's going to heat up and this would burn back this so we take that off because this is a welding face for the bulkhead top panel so the whole all the way around including the front face where the dashboard welds on and now we just give it a bit of a one two and round we go all the way round and we'll start offering it up and get ready for some spot weld action some window measurements to double check weld through primer next stage bulkhead top going on bulkhead main panel going on sorry one day I'm going to do it about making a mess first coat we do two coats of this spinning round I've got to do the other side as well, we'll this, let this dry, it dries pretty quick ok that's the weld through primer right bulkhead is in position and we get our first weld down that side there tape measure over there to get the aperture make sure it's double right but you'll get a bit of change on aperture when you fit the other panels so we'll keep our eye on that to a couple of mil we uh, get a couple of plug welds in 
one's just gone in there and then one's just in on that top and now we're cleaning up just through the top layer of paint and the spot welder set with the right um, attachment on the end of the spot welder and we just take that top layer off everything else is weld through primer or bare metal on the other side of the panel so we can get the spot welder in and we can put a nice row along there that's going to give a factory finish and look because that's quite a high vis line we're not going to be able to get the spot welder in here so we've got to plug those areas and again this side we can't get the spot welder in so we'll just plug and then do some fake looking spot weld I'll show you how to do those later so I'll put you on the tripod let's get a, a row of spots in there now then we'll start attaching the dashboard again that's going to be spot welded so quite a bit of spot welding going on now Here crackling right we can probably get a couple more spots in but for now we're done and you'll see that that finish that's very very nice I'm pleased that the spot welder got in there because I wasn't sure and just the lip here just protrude out a little bit and you're only about halfway which is how they are actually so they just you've got to get right tight in with a spot welder on that run so that's that now for the dashboard dashboard's going to be tricky and also I've noticed here that there's little lines here, can you see those imprints? They're for sealant to go on to create the airtight heater box intake area. So we've got to have seam sealer in there and land that bulkhead top plate on top of the seam sealer. It's all uh, glued in, you can see it there. That stops and makes sure that the air is drawn only from the grill and from the other areas of the car. So they have thought about this a lot. Okay, that stops fumes coming into your car. Okay. So we want to get the dash, we've, we've fixed and repaired it as you saw, now we want to get that dash up and spot welded along this ridge. We're going to put a couple of spots on it, then we're going to get the actual main dashboard just over there against the wall, you see that, just leaning up. We want to make sure that we get the height correct for this. We don't want to put that dash top in and find that it doesn't fit, although I must admit it does self-guide itself on this lip here. There's pretty much nowhere else, nowhere else it can go. And if you recall on the earlier videos, we actually mocked that up and made a note of how it fits. And it does go snug up. And indeed, other scrap bulkheads that we've got show that panel fitting snug right up to there. So it's pretty much going to guide itself. However, it's prudent to check. But we need that dash top in because we can't put this bulkhead topping panel on. So you won't be able to get the claws of the welder over here. That's the reason why we do the dash next. Okay, let's go.
Okay, that's looking initially good. And this is prep, but we need weld through prime on this face. And also, one of the brackets is bent. This L shape here is bent. We need to straighten that in the vise before we offer it up on the inside of the panels. So it's weld through prime on here, straighten up a bracket. Then it's pretty much just guiding itself as nowhere else it can go, it just slots up. That lip just finds its home. This is clean metal, so this should weld through with a spot welder really nicely. Let's have a look, see how it comes out. Should be a good job this one. Here we go. Right, that's good stuff there. I do enjoy using the, the weld for it. A little bit of a break now. I'm having a little bit of a, let's have a little chat, me and you, and YouTube man. I can't really see if the camera's picking up here, so I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. Um, what do you reckon? Part 9's going quite good. I'm quite pleased with this. I've got dust on my glasses. Uh, yeah. What could we say? But we're just giving it some thoughts there, and I was quick, really pleased with the spot welding business. And now it got into that top panel of the bulkhead. I'm hoping I can see you in a minute. Let's see a damn thing. That's better. Covered in dust. Yeah. So let's get that panel in at the back. Then these. Have to be welded to just where the A-pillar area is, so that's a, that's a MIG job, no way a spot welder goes in there. I've just spotted where we spot welded. There's a sort of spotted where we spot welded. That new bracket on the side. This clean metal, this dipped metal, um, is good because everything works, the welder stays clean. Uh, the weld stay clean and also the spot welder thanks you for it as well because that can be funny on rusty panels in fact there's no point trying to spot weld through any anywhere where there's rust you've just got to be clean totally clean so dipping it whilst we remove a lot of the panels there we're actually going to have reference points and we're actually going to have panels easy to take off we don't get covered in mess and we're saving a lot of metal. So the dipping people asked why you're going to remove most of it. It's simply this, you know, you can use it as reference material that's clean. It just makes life easier. And when you are doing repairs like we did on the front end, it paid off because it's so nice to get the butt welds together on those and the lap joints on the legs. And whatever remaining metal we kept, the slam panel in the middle, for example, uh, made good clean lines. Now I have to grind paint off and have fumes. Oh, that's another thing. Fumes are minimal. I thought I'd be struggling here. I've got a ventilated mask, by the way, but the battery's gone on now. I'm waiting for the battery to arrive any minute. If I find fumes are a problem, I've got some of the windows open here. Um, then I would be using that breathe through welding mask. It's a good one, Albatross welding mask. But because of the dip, again, Fumes are cut down a great deal. Yes, it's an expense, but it's part of this project and we can see where we're up to. It also gives you an accurate idea of where you're up to with what panels you're going to need instead of waiting for the dreaded day when you get to the end and it's it's full of filler, which you thought was a good panel. This just, there's no stone unturned when you dipped it. So that gave me an idea of what panels I'm going to be looking out for. Okay, let's get this dash in there now. Come with me. Right, we know we're in the right spot because when you clamp up this bracket here, it's lining up with the original spot welds. This is the original bracket, this is the original panel, so you can see the impact point that I made. Another advantage we're using the pilot because you get a nice mark where you used to be with your spot weld, which helps when you come to reassemble. So those pilots paying off. Of course, if you drilled it with a spot weld flat bit, you'd still get a mark, but this just helps that little bit just in case any paint went over them, whatever, you've always got a dimple line. So we're good there. We need to now just 
get some welds into that area so that's going to be good we're going to do that and we're going to get the spot welder on the top and also weld the bracket on over that side so it's pretty much guided itself along that rim you can see let's see if we can get the camera to pick up I know there's back light affecting the exposure but you'll just see how it runs along the rim there and we're all weld through prime it up clamp just in the middle but we'll move that as we go along with a spot welder so dash I had a shower and then found my brother within the hour. I'll smoke another cup. Please don't stop saying no, or I'll stop believing you. We'll know that this party feels too. Okay, I said join us, just have to do a few more extra little things, a couple of clamps on and put the actual dash in place. So now I'll try and get the spot welder in my hands, a reasonable bit of weight on it, and work our way along. Might do one in the middle first. Okay, so spot welder's going to try and uh, get inside the car. Come on, join us. You keep me running round and round. Well, that's all right with me. Up and down, I'm up the wall, I'm up the bloody tree. I need some new questions, questions you don't ask. Why I'm up the tree, you see. Why are you down there, I see. So I'm told, ah, oh, the cables are, the cable needs to go through, the cable needs to go through the middle of the bay. Ah! No! Okay, with a spot welder in the middle of the engine bay, not underneath it. I'll go in the middle, I've got the dash, actual dash in position, everything's lining up and I'm just checking the alignment of those heater slits, the demist and vents that make sure they're parallel with the bulkhead because you don't want the dash on a slight twist so they parallel with the bulkhead and I've checked on another bulkhead outside and it goes right up to the rim and there's a little, little curved crescent in the middle which is exactly how this is set up now so a boom boom, let's see if that well through primer can work with the spot welder. Let's couple in the middle, one outside, we'll go out that way. Okay, I should be able to stand inside the car and do it. You won't see the top of my head, I'm afraid. You're going to see my hands only. But the principle's the same. And waiting in the back point. Pop. I've done it!
some weight in that, but it went on real good. Get a carving up, real nice. Okay, I'm a bit random inside here, but still, I don't want to straight the line. It's a bit, but it works. Okay. Okay, I'm a bit, the rest of them a bit straighter. But I was following some of the other holes and some of them did dip down, but not probably not as much as that, but that's all right. We can live with that, not bad. Um, as the weight of the spot welder started drawing you. It looks like you're gonna miss when you pull it right to the top of the lip, but you actually don't. There's loads of metal inside on the lip of the dash. But yeah, wow, okay, good for that bit. I'll see you tomorrow's part of the film. I'm retiring now. It's getting late. Very good. See you tomorrow. Well, as time ticks away, episode 10 draws to a close. A little look around the workshop to see uh, the catch of the day. We, do, we did all right. We left you just about to put that top closing panel on and then get that scuttle on in episode 11 I'm sure yeah, you're going to be looking forward to that so the, the front of the car came together quite quick I thought a couple of months to get us up to this stage so yeah and the Bramble Mark III called seeing a, a little sign or hotline no calls yet our mystery guest in the helmet no appearances yet who will it be we just don't know. A little look round the workshop doesn't matter. Doesn't really doesn't half get covered in dust quick. Uh, every month we have a dust down, which means pulling everything out, wiping everything down, vacuuming everything, blasting everything with the airline gun, just to keep you on top. It makes for better filming if uh, things are tip top and clean. So almost up to that transmission tunnel then I was going to start working back in the later episodes where those floor pans will go in so all clamped up on this ready for you in episode 11 I've already got the footage though <laughs> but um, hour long films so painted them panels ready to go on that gets seam sealed I'll t tell you about that in episode 11 there's some quite interesting facts that you may or may not know about uh, plenum chambers the air induction chamber for the heater controls the fresh air coming in needs to be uh, sealed properly there are, are provisions in the pressings which we might have discussed in episode 10 but I'll show you that there's further sealing work needs doing and we've got evidence of that on other panels so uh, collecting uh, my tin signs I'm going to start slowly adding one to the wall every now and again and I will fix the clock needs soldering so all looking clean nice when you get them panels out that's the paint that will be hidden away at the back and the, the paint shop won't get to those areas so I'll know that they're nicely painted so we'll take you away and fade out and thanks for all your comments as usual appreciate it leave a comment at the bottom subscribe if you've not all the usual stuff and visit us on Patreon I keep saying that don't see any new subscribers yet on Patreon. Okay, over now. Good night. Thanks for all your support. Pete Seacourt, Senior City, signing off. I'll shove you a little, uh, little bit of a, a bonus clip at the end, something that goes wrong. Okay, Pete C, I'm out. Good night. Hope you enjoyed. And as little Newt says, enjoy. Okay, I said join us, just have to do a few more extra little things, a couple of clamps on and put the actual dash in place. So now I'll try and get the spot welder in my hands, a reasonable bit of weight on it, and work our way along. Might do one in the middle first. Okay, so spot welder's going to try and uh, get inside the car. Come on, join us. You keep me running round and round. Well, that's all right with me. Up and down, I'm up the wall, I'm up that bloody tree. I need some new questions, questions you don't ask. 
Why I'm up the tree, you see. Why are you down there, you see. So I'm told, ah, oh, the cables are. The cable needs to go through. The cable needs to go through the middle of the bay. Ah! No! I've never had. Never had so many jagged pieces of metal catching every bit of my clothes. Every jagged piece of metal. <laughs> Welcome to episode nine. Welcome to episode, welcome to episode nine where we do loads of spot welding. Welcome, it's episode nine. We're going to do loads of spot welding and rebuild that front end. Come on.